The academic paradigm in regards to the chronological history of man, the claimed, continued, warts and all documented, completely linear journey to the modern day from a claimed birthplace upon the continent of Africa to the caves of Europe and Asia, becoming post-Ice Age neoliths, all somehow mysteriously capable of incredible feats, all mysteriously deciding to build similar structures in similar ways of similar size, with no explanation even attempted. All this claimed as having happened and fully known of without a single gap. An institutional castle built from nothing but sand. The Bering Strait is home to a theory of the same name, crucial to this evolutionary tale of human development. Yet what resulted from research done by a handful of highly capable individuals of integrity, it is a sight which proves beyond doubt that the Bering Strait theory is nothing but a lie. One which those who profit from this current paradigm due to steel have been revealed spending great efforts in protecting it from the truth. A truth mutated into a perceived conspiracy. The Bering Strait was a frozen landmass, connecting continents, crucial in explaining primitive man's travel across them. A modern historical paradigm not only explaining the migration of man to the rest of the world, but it must have been at a particular specific time in history to fit currently funded scholarly accepted opinion on the development of man. Virginia Steen McIntyre, however, found fossils, stone tools, and strata dating back 200,000 years earlier than academically accepted. She was told to either repeat the excavation and provide fitting dates, or her findings would be thrown out. She stood by her research and eventually lost her funding. However, it seems that Virginia had a knack for studying areas which are clearly, if historical teachings be inaccurate, highly controversial areas of archaeological interest, for she was seemingly a thorn in their sides with her other previous research and subsequent discoveries too, specifically those made at other sites such as Huyatlaco, an archaeological site in the Valsaquillo Basin near the city of Puebla, Mexico. After excavations in the 1960s, the site became notorious due to geochronologist analysis from the research done in conjunction with steel and others also indeed indicated that human habitation at Huayatlaco dated to as far back as 250,000 years ago. Wikipedia states regarding these finds, quote, these controversial findings are orders of magnitude older than the scientific consensus for habitation of the New World, which generally traces widespread human migration to the New World to a maximum of 13,000 to 16,000 years ago." End quote. Although these two sites are a considerable distance from one another, they are crucial for the chronological storyline of modern claims regarding timelines of human migration slash habitation dates which they want to be perceived as far back within antiquity as being 13,000 years ago. However, this evidence proves that humans had already established these landmasses more than a quarter of a million years ago. Although Wikipedia predictably attempts retorts to these claims, to their credit, they have listed a vast array of incredibly talented, highly qualified specialists, along with their own testimonies and personal investigative conclusions supporting the work of Virginia Steele McIntyre. It's also to its credit that they note the harassment received by these pioneers who literally threw the rules out of the window in pursuit of the truth. Quote, Steen McIntyre claims that some of the original research team were harassed, viewed as incompetent, or saw their careers hampered due to their involvement in such a controversial and anomalous investigations." End quote. She would eventually lose access to funding, lambasted for her fines and claims never ceasing. Regardless of these attacks, we find Virginia and the many other courageous individuals commendable in their search for the truth and they are undoubtedly areas which they have debunked with artifacts and dates, evidence so passionately argued as lies, it is almost complementary to her ability. This controversy is to us undoubtedly highly compelling.
The mission of our channel has always been to provide our viewers with impartial evidence found through ruthless logic, visual investigation, and expeditions to ancient sites far too advanced to have been constructed by said culprits within currently known history, that being post-Ice Age man. Highly precise, highly advanced, or often enormous megalithic features, which not only exposes deliberate inaccuracies regarding currently guarded, staunchly defended, and academically regurgitated explanations of our history as a whole. The ancient Egyptians' construction of the Great Pyramids, for example, is not only argued as true by those who themselves have experienced this same conditioning and to never allow intellectual deviation. We are taught by nearly every influential medium, every aspect of historical study, an incomplete tale of events. For once anyone begins to question the legitimacy or the mainstream explanation for these sites and the construction events they would have been, it naturally leads to one unraveling more and more enigmas, anomalies, and inconsistencies within not only the tale of Giza, but countless aspects of currently pushed explanations for so many sites that contain to this day unexplained, remarkably precise, often ingenious methods of construction, all ignored by academia as a whole. For not only is Khufu's pyramid 6.5 million tons polar to this unimaginably enormous undertaking it must have been to cut, move, and use so many stones at that location, with a plateau also argued by some as having artificial origins. Longyu Cave in China is yet another enormous ancient unexplained site, similar to Durinkyu, another ancient underground city found within Turkey. Longyu Cave has a staggeringly huge inner footprint, the many millions of metric tons of stone hollowed out to create the cave system has never been located. Stone cut using a tool which left an intriguing yet highly recognizable mark simply gone, excavated, and transported away somehow. We have always attempted to provide accurate information, and although we have our own opinions on said subjects, we feel it is far more important to convey all information, so that we all have an opportunity to come to our own conclusions based upon all the findings made during investigations. We attempt to provide that which we were, and still are, all being starved of. The whole picture was obscured from us, never actually teaching us how to apply our critical capacity to question the legitimacy of what we are told but to push buttons, repeat information, and pull levers. Our mission is to share as many events as can be found regarding the technological advancement and also the possible true age of man. To prove beyond any reasonable doubt that not only have humans been around far longer than currently attested, but we, as a species, not only have a far greater yet hidden history, many specialists around the globe also believe that we display traits of a past, a mass trauma which subjected us to such a difficult existence that behavioral traits within humans became prevalent demanded of by this hostile environment, some of which are still strongly displayed to this day within modern society. Although we have covered current problems with evolution theory, in relation to the missing leaps between species, vertebrates, or phyla groups, natural selection is a completely different animal. For a behavioral trait to become prevalent, however, like some often displayed within societal behaviors, particularly when it comes to procreation or what we seek in a mate, are all indicative of a past experience of cataclysm. Our work's mission was initially to convey to the world as many aspects of history, still completely a mystery, and most importantly, to expose the conditioning and circulation of fallacies, which for decades deceived modern society of a true tale of the history of our planet, and especially our species. We began to notice that many of these ancient sites display similarities with each other, regardless of geographical distances. We have now identified countless sites which were undoubtedly the work of the same civilizations. 
Not only did these similarities show a sharing of technologies globally, thus proof of a global civilization, and due to having identified differentiations and similar features between certain sites, and the masonry techniques used therein, enabled us to make the first strongly supported successful identification of more than one lost civilization anywhere north of Giza's casing stones. Each subject we cover, not only adding a little bit more weight to our argument of past highly advanced civilization, but also expanding the field of evidence to prove its true case. It feels now that it is not an if, but rather a when in regards to truly knowing our true history. As our understanding of this lost past grows, so does our understanding of ourselves. It is an endeavor which we find highly compelling. Mersin, a large city and port on the Mediterranean coast of southern Turkey with some extraordinary ancient ruins. Named after an aromatic plant, Mersini, a genus of the myrtle plant family, a plant which has a deep and mysterious historic relationship with humans, still to be found growing in abundance in the area. A place which 17th century traveler Eviachi Libe wrote of, noting an ancient clan named Marcino Libe, presumably also named after this special species of plant. Excavated by John Garstang, who managed to examine 23 levels of occupation at the mysterious ruins. According to academia, the ancient fortifications found at the location were put up around 4500 BC, with the site, like so many others we have covered over the past two years, abruptly abandoned at some point within antiquity. That although obviously due to a cataclysmic event far before 4500 BC, is a date argued by funded academics worldwide. Our recent video explaining our own conclusions of this being due to natural cyclical solar activity, subsequently triggering volcanic eruptions which in turn triggered great floods and a possible ice age, it seems struck a chord that some do not want resonating, with it being aggressively dismissed by a volley of objections coming from several directions and sources. Our own thesis, based upon personal exhaustive and detailed exploration, often accompanied by our own personal discoveries at sites the world over. Discoveries never before made or indeed publicly shared. Often intriguing connections linking these ancient sites with each other. Our theory regarding their demise, however, has been attempted to be dismissed seemingly en masse, in favor of a comet impact, with most of mainstream media, including Nat Geo and indeed the Smithsonian, not forgetting a certain suspiciously successful YouTube channel, which we shall not mention the name of, who we now perceive as controlled opposition to our own hard-earned discoveries and conclusions thereof, releasing a volley of opposing claims shortly before and immediately after our own release of information surrounding our solar hypothesis. This released within our video concerning Atlantis being that of the pre-Diluvian world, rather than a single continent, with these mainstream entities pushing an opposing theory in unison, relating to a conveniently timed discovery of a comet impact crater in Greenland. Additionally, we also believe we have unraveled, after some contemplation, their motivations for attempting to conceal solar activity as being the original causation. Yet, we will leave it up to you to decide why these ancient sites worldwide were seemingly all abandoned.
Our reason for being reluctant to present a full expose of not only our discoveries regarding their motive for concealing solar activity, but also who would want to, is that we truly feel exposing such agendas would jeopardize our work in several ways. We may digress, however, if we continue our work along the same path. The astute among you may come to realize such motivations on your own. The focus of this video, however, is not solely regarding the recent attack we witnessed upon our work, regardless of the mountain of evidence we have surrounding solar activity. It does not regard the Neolis worship of the sun, a culture we have long postulated were a surviving fragment of this once highly advanced civilization, or rather, what we now perceive was an obsession with the observation of the sun due to fearful memories, rather than that of worship but rather the uncanny advanced as yet unexplainable architecture, which can be found dotting Mersin and indeed the world. Mersin, like many other extremely ancient well-built fortifications, became a part of many states and civilizations – the Hittites, Assyrians, Persians, Greeks, Seleucids, and Lagids, to name but a few. With polygonal masonry being one of the most easily recognized characteristics, a characteristics for all you amateur explorers out there to use, to easily identify sites as pre-Diluvian. Littering the site, it is a sophisticated unexplained form of masonry that is also found within Peru, Egypt, Necromantion, uncannily similar in style, may we add, although many other Greek sites such as Delphi, Italy, Japan, South Korea, Turkey, Lebanon, and so on. A method of construction left by a civilization we now feel the evidence for the existence of, and indeed them being academically hidden thanks to ours and others' exhaustive efforts, has become overwhelming. And our suspicions regarding the reasons for the concealing of them, and indeed the reason for their demise, are irrelevant. Even if subsequently blaming climate fluctuations upon our planet, on human activities, is not only incredibly profitable, but also a cunning method of controlling the human population. These circumstantial factors are irrelevant to the evidence of the past existence of this extremely intelligent, clearly technologically advanced and capable civilization. Evidence that has seen funded institutes scrambling to push specific opinions upon inquisitive minds. Regardless of whether we now realize the motivation behind the attack on our channel, undoubtedly being due to the fact that we are certainly on to something, regardless of Poseidon's trident, the undeniable links of this symbolic weaponry with modern-day destroyers, whether physical nuclear threats or spiritual depictive clues, indicators of specific human capabilities, not placed out of mockery, but a nod to those in the know that if you watch our previous video carefully, we'll realize strongly supports our theory regarding the Atlanteans, Plato's clue, and academia's awareness yet concealment of such realities. These modern factors are irrelevant to our mission of unraveling the past. However, the fact that it seems that we must now tread carefully regarding the truth of ancient Earth, we do not find concerning, for indeed, we have long expected this reaction, a consequence we predicted would occur once we started to get close to a truth. A truth hidden by profiteering. Rather, we find it all to be highly compelling.